Let's take a look at another example of finding the x-intercepts, or the roots, of a quadratic equation. It's already given in factored form. And if you remember what we just did, we were looking at if it is given in factored form, you can just use a zero product idea that if I can make one of the things equal to zero, then everything equals zero. And that means that we can then solve it. So let's take a look at this one here. So I've got y equals 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now if I want to find the x-intercepts, by definition, I set y equal to 0. So then I have the same thing, 2x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now if I want to make this work, I can play around with the different x values that I'm looking at here. So in this case, I can make x whatever I want, but if I make it a special value, I can make this whole thing equal 0. If you're not sure what to do, just do it off to the side. 2x plus 1 and set that equal to 0. So I want that to be 0, because 0 times anything gives you 0, so it works. So in this case right here, I can use algebra, and that means I'll leave the 2x here. I'll move the plus 1 over to the other side, which makes it a minus 1. And that means if I want to get x on its own, I have to divide both sides by 2. So that means I have minus 1 over 2. So that's one of my answers or one of my solutions. The other one uh, comes from setting x minus 3 equals 0. And again, if you've seen this a few times, you won't even need to do the algebra. You'll be able to just look at it and go, well, x equals 3 makes this work. If you're that good and that fast, that's fantastic. But just in case you're not, I just wanted to show you where this came from. Now this one right here, um, there's also a nice easy trick. If ever you have something like ax plus b form like this, you can always just say it's minus this over this. That's what it'll always be. In other words, when I look at 2x plus 1 right away, I know that it gives me a minus 1 over 2. And it turns out if you work it out, hey look, minus 1 over 2. So these are the two x-intercepts of this one. Which means again, if we want to draw this graph or sketch it, we could at least have an idea what it looks like. We could know that at x equals plus 3, and at x equals well, this is minus 2, this is minus 1, this is 1, this is 2, like this. If I did that, I would at least know that my graph passes through this point here and at minus 1 half, so somewhere over here. That means I don't know exactly where the vertex is. Well, I know the x value, it's halfway between these. But it would be something like this because it opens upwards. I'm not sure how far this goes, though. But the idea is just to know where these two points are. And see, we can find these two points pretty quickly by just knowing, uh, by using factored form. So here's the big issue though. What if it's not in factored form already? In other words, we want to go from general form to factored form. Then what do we do? Uh, remember now, factored form, uh, we want to get it looking like something like what we just had over here. Okay, so we want to go from general form to factored form. Again, if we wanted to just write this out very clearly, so general form, That's where it goes, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And our goal is to go from that form to something that's factored form, because that's much easier to see the roots. Right, because this isn't really that helpful, but factored form is awesome, because we can go x minus p times x minus q. Whoops. There we go. So we want to go from this form to this form. Now there's a way to do it. Uh, lots of people have different ideas of how to do it. Lots of teachers teach different ways. And I'm going to show you something that may seem a little bit weird. So I'm going to show you the steps right now. So the first step okay, to doing something uh, is to take out common factors this is going to be important here. Okay, Take out common factors of the entire equation. So not like before when we were looking at vertex form, we were only taking out common factors of x squared or x. Here we want to take out common factors or things that are f common to everything. Then we want to write out a, b, and c. I'm going to be giving you these steps right now without a context, which means it may look a bit strange. Um, Especially here when I say find the magic numbers. I just like to call them this, but I mean, it doesn't matter what you call them. We're looking for two special numbers whose product is a times c and whose sum 
is B. That's going to be important. I'll show you how to do that in a second here. Now here comes the weird part. Okay, now most ways that show factoring, so if I go back right here, most sort of people's factoring tricks, they need for A to be one. In other words, if this is just like Y equals X squared plus, I don't know, two X plus one, then that's pretty straightforward to do. But if A is not one, then a lot of people's factoring tricks sort of fall apart. But this one that I learned a while back, uh, this one always works. And that's why I want to teach you one that always works for every case. Keep in mind, this is only an algorithm. This is only, you know, a way to do it. And an algorithm without a reason sometimes isn't so helpful. But this actually works. It'll get you from this form to this form. Now, what you can always do, you can always just guess values here and what goes here and what goes here. Right? There's not just one way of doing it. As long as when you're done, if you multiply all this out, in other words, if you expand this, you'd better get the general form. So there's lots of different ways of going about doing factoring. I'm just showing you one way. And this is just an algorithm. What, means, uh, what that means is that this is just a sort of thing to try to memorize or remember how to do, which some people really don't like doing, but other people love that, just having a recipe to follow. So here I'll give you a recipe for factoring. And again, you can always check if you did it right. So the weird part here, or the part that's a little bit different than most people's tricks is this. In other words, most people who've learned how to factor know that you're supposed to do something with two numbers that multiply together, and you're supposed to do something with two numbers that add uh, together, or at least taking a look and making sure that your sum is this. The weird thing though is to do this, divide by a. When I say weird, I just mean it's different. It's just something that most people haven't seen. And then I'm going to say read bottom, to top. Now without a context, this probably doesn't seem to make much sense at all. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, put all this uh, somewhere. I'm going to move it all down a little bit. I'm going to put it under the title of uh, you know, factoring algorithm, I think is what I'll call this. So factoring algorithm or factoring trick. So this is how you can factor. If you do this, it'll work. Now I'm going to show you in the next video how to actually use this because this without any practice means nothing. So I'm going to show you how to actually use these steps in order to really carry out factoring.